You know, we all know that today was National Signing Day and really excited about the class we have. A very solid class and uh, we were able to meet our needs. You know, I had to congratulate our coaches for the jobs they did in the short period of time that they had and just uh, the work they did just uh, relentless. And what we were able to do is just solidify the class that had already committed to us and we want to make sure that they made that commitment to the University of South Florida and that's the reason why that we uh, stay true to our commitment to them. And then our coaches were able to go out and just find other players. And if you look at, we were able to comb the state, uh, it made South Florida, it was a priority. And the guy who did a great job there was Corey Bell. And Corey had relationships already in South Florida, being a uh, coach there in the Miami area for a long time. And then uh, just going into Jacksonville, able to get uh, pick up a few commitments there and then just locally, you know, able to go to Armwood and uh, get the two players that we were able to get out of Armwood. But, you know, I j would like to just say that, you know, it was hard work and it was great for our coaching staff and just to put this whole class together, you know, with us being here in the short amount of time that we were here and then it being our first uh, year recruiting. <clears throat> Uh, Coach Tito Vinach from Bulls 247. Uh, was it a little bit difficult getting a late start? Obviously, it seemed like you had to work after the bowl game to get your staff and get really onto the road of recruiting. Did that kind of put things behind the eight ball to start off? Well, I don't know if so much it was behind because we had a number of uh, commitments and then we did lose uh, t uh, two of the commitments, two or three of them, but uh, just uh, putting the staff together and, you know, well, it was really great if you look at our coaching staff, you know, what Corey Bell had been recruited this area before the state. Uh, Brian Jean Marie had uh, recruited this state. So a lot of guys on the staff had recruited the areas that they were placed in. But just, um, we were just behind and getting really to know the recruits and just building that relationship because it comes down to relationships. And, you know, you had to try to go in and try to change some of the minds there at the last second. And uh, some of it we were uh, successful in doing, some we weren't. But uh, now that we know that what we have to go do now and then just getting a, uh, getting a year started, it'll be much better. Coach, Joey Knight at the Tampa Bay <clears throat> Times, you mentioned you addressed your needs. When you assessed the roster, what did you feel like your needs were? Well, Joey, it's always with linemen, and that's only where you got to start at. And it, uh, I want to say we had seven linemen in this class, I think three on offense and four on defense. But that's where you win football games, and you got to win up front. And, and uh, you look at our line now, we have a lot of returners coming back, but we still have to always address it. That's where you start at, because skill guys always say you're always going to be able to find skill guys, especially in this state. And I always look at it, too, is big guys beat up little guys, so you always need the big guys to really get going. Charlie, uh, Kevin O'Donnell, Fox 13. Uh, you look around the state and you see some of the, uh, the coaches that are ahead of the programs of, of the major uh, college teams here. How well do you think you did uh, in your first go around with, with uh, some of the, the, the uh, impressions that they've already made? Well, if you look at the state and you look at the big three, they're, they're always going to do good because of where they sit and the guys that they already have in place and they've been there for the, the amount of time that they've been. But if, if you look at us and just where we fell, you know, is, you know, you look at South Florida, FAU, Central Florida, and, you know, we're all in that mix there. And I feel like that we, we were very comparable to what they did. Coach, this is a question from one of our viewers on Facebook Live, John uh, Newtson. He wants to know about how much emphasis was placed on the defensive side of the ball in this class. Was there any more emphasis on defense as opposed to offense? Well, we signed 10 players on defense, and, uh, and that was an area that we need to improve on, and we have to play much better defense than what we played last season. Coach Chuck Muller, USF Oracle. Um, what was your program on the rise? What was your biggest selling point, if you can really pinpoint one, when you, when you went to these recruits' homes and, and trying to get them to come and either stay in the Bay Area or, or come here? Well, just coming off a, a 11 win season was really a great selling point for us and just uh, talking about the direction of the, the program is going and, and we, everything was so positive right now. And so it wasn't really hard to sell what we needed to sell because, you know, when players 
within the state and where we did a really good job of staying within the state, they know the program, they've seen the program, they see the development of the program. So it, it wasn't tough to sell at all. It, it was just more of us trying to hold on to what we got and then just making sure that, hey, this is the right fit for us. Coach John Sable, ABC Action News. When you look at your class, were there any surprises that you saw that you didn't expect coming from any of these kids? Well, if you look at like Jabril uh, was a good, big surprise for us, and uh, you know he coming here on the last minute, and, and you know what's happening now with a, a lot of these players are they kind of waiting there until the last second, and and they, they deserve it because they work so hard and they should take their time and they could they deserve that spill on the day that they have it. And then you look at the uh, three players coming out of one high school at, at Carroll City. And it, it was just great to you see a team that had won the state championship. Now you're able to go in and, and get three of their key players to, uh, to uh, come and, and jump on board here. But uh, just to, even Harris out of uh, Jacksonville was a good get for us. So you, you look at it and you really don't know until you get that, that paper come in on that fax machine of really what you're going to get. But we were able to uh, really get some good ones today. Coach, how critical was Sean King in just retaining the local guys, and how critical will he be going forward just recruiting the area? Super recruiter. That's Sean. We call him super recruiter. No, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, I, I told Sean that a, a lot of times as, as a young coach, you know, you always say, I got him. I said, okay, let's, let's slow down. Let's be careful now. And, uh, but he was able just, just locally uh, – we're able to just get in because he already had a relationship with a lot of the players, so he was able to just get into some of those homes. And and one time we were sitting there and, and um, uh, we walked in and we addressed ourselves to the family and told them who we were. And and so Charlie Strong, Sean, and then uh, the lady, her husband wasn't there at the time, so she called. He called the house and he said, uh, "Now who's there?" And she said, "Coach Strong is here." And Sean King is here. And he said, Sean is there, really? And then she was like, oh, my God, I didn't know that was him. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, we kind of changed over the years, and he's really changed some, so that's why we didn't know that was him. But, no, uh, it was uh, – he, he did a really good job. He, he did. And uh, he was very per persistent, and, and he stayed on it. And, it. and whenever he would lose one, it would just hurt him. And I said, okay, you're going to lose some, so let's not think you're going to get every one of them. You found uh, in the recruiting you've done in the last month here that some of the kids locally in Tampa are more eager to get out of the area just to experience something else, and that it may be easier to recruit Orlando, Miami, Jacksonville, Tallahassee. Well, I think that what we have to do is just we, we have to get on the kids here. And what happened this, uh, this recruiting cycle is that we just walked in too late. You know, you look at some of them that already made their commitments or they visited somewhere, and then we come trying to rush in at the last second, trying to sell ourselves and sell the program. And it's good when you get them on the visit, they're all excited. But then once they leave again, then reality kind of sit back in for some of them because they'd already built those relationships with the previous you know, the coaches at the previous schools. So – what we, um, what we know we have to do now is just get in this Bay Area and just lock in and, and knowing the ones we want to get and let's, let's go get them and let's lock them down early. You know, when you talk about just outside the city, you know, when you look at Miami, you look at Jacksonville, even in the panhandle, you know, a lot of those players are looking to get away and, and they feel like, you know, we're far enough away where they can grow up, where they can grow up and they can have their time to them and, and they can, the family's close enough where they need to get home, they can get home. But a lot of times within the, when you're close, it is, it, it, everyone sells them that. So if I'm from the outside, I'm gonna sell them, why you won't stay at home? You need to go away and grow up and then come back home. You can always come and visit. But we just got to do a better job. <clears throat> uh, Coach, two of your best players on the roster, Quentin Flowers and Dietrich Nichols, are from the Miami area. You got some more Miami players now with Kevon Dingle, Natron Culpepper, and Danelle Thomas. Do you, is it something to know that it's good to be able to dip into a, a, a talented, rich area like Miami, especially like you mentioned uh, defensive back Corey Bell and his ability to recruit in that area? 
Well, not only Miami, and you're right, there's some really good players in Miami, but even across this whole state, so it, it's really good players. Like even within the Bay Area, you, you think about the number of players that have left here that uh, were able to go somewhere else. But, um, you know, when you when you talk about Miami, you want your flowers is a, a good, you know, a good selling point for us because they see the success that he's had here. So it's, a, it's an easy sell. So what players do, they, they look at, players that you already have on the team or they do they play do they start how much they're playing how much are they really contributing to the team and so now you're able to really sell that and let them when they host they sell it and just let them know hey if you come here you have a chance to play just like I did. And Charlie of the guys that you're, you're bringing in this year physically uh, where are they mature wise in terms of competing for a starting job maybe this year or do, are these guys more uh, needing some seasoning and, and developmental. Well, if you, you look at this season and you, you look at what we already have, it's you have so many t starters returning. So now, it's if they're good enough to come in and be that what you already have, then they're going to be given that opportunity. But I always say this with Lyman, it's always tough because now you're talking about you bring in a freshman who really hasn't grown into his body, hasn't really developed yet, and he's going against a fifth-year guy who really knows the game and knows the ropes. So that's really tough. The skill guy, skill is skill. You know, it's kind of it's athletic ability on athletic ability. If you can run and you jump and run faster than a guy, then you have a good chance to go beat him out. It's just if you're going to be physical enough. But uh, every one of them will get a chance, and then we'll just see where they fit and how they can add. If they're not a starter, they can really add depth to what we already have and just add depth to their needs of, of our team. <clears throat> Coach, what do you anticipate Duran Bell doing for you? Well, he's a very skilled, very athletic, a guy who can play on both sides of the ball, but he loves the offensive side. And uh, you know, the thing he's got is, is great punt and uh, kickoff return skills. So it's, you know, with each one of them, you, they, they all add something different. They all have different qualities, and, and we'll be able to assess it more when we get them on the field. Coach, specifically your Carroll City prospects, uh, Cole Pepper and Dingle, what do you see in them? They're really highly rated guys. Well, Dingle a, is a big receiver that you like. And when you talk about big receivers, guys that can body up a guy. Because now you would, when you get a little DB on him, you're hoping he can go up and just take the ball from him. And then uh, Cole Pepper being a big uh, corner safety, he can play either one. He has really great height on the corner because you, you want six-foot guys because you want to match up with big uh, receivers on the outside. So those guys are just two skilled guys that has a lot of ability. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Coach, I've got one more from Facebook Live. This is from Brian Santana. Wants to know about Mecky Lapointe from Armwood High School. Uh, Brian uh, Lapointe, you know his junior year, and uh, I've never seen a guy around the football as much as him, and the number of interceptions he's had. And then he gets the knee injury, and then he comes back to latter part, and uh, does an unbelievable job, and still finds a way to get around the ball. But you know the thing you like him is a quality, a very quality young man, great character, uh, just unbelievable, and then just uh, just being around him, he's going to be a special, not only a special player, but a special person, great fit for our program. Coach, one of the bigger local lands you, you got was John Marcellus out of Jefferson High School. Uh, he's a guy that stayed committed throughout the process from August to now. And mm -hmm. what's, what do you see in him and what do you see in kids who, who are willing to withstand a coaching change and stay with programs like that? Well, a lot of that has to do with their high school coaches, and they do a great job. But just, you know, you made a commitment, just stick to your commitment, even though it's a new staff, give them a chance and let them come and sit down with you. And that's what he did. And then when he developed that relationship with Coach Havasey, then it was golden because now we were able to hold on to him. But uh, that's what you like to see more of, especially when you're in, when you're local. You you want you you want to have that relationship with the high school coaches to know that hey, we're going to take care of any young man that you send us, but we just want to make sure that we have a great relationship with them, where, you know, they're going to give us a chance also to go recruit them. Charlie, now that recruiting is over, what's the next step for you and, and this program and, and going ahead with it? 
Well, we had a, a really good workout this morning. It was the first one with the coaching staff involved, but now I need to finish up. I got a couple of hires I need to go make, and then we'll just start on and as a meeting on offense, meeting on defense, and with our kicking game and making sure as a staff that we uh, get our plan set, what we want to do on offense, get a plan set, what we want to do in the kicking game and on defense, and, and our coaches just start meeting and meeting with the players where we need to develop that re relationship with the players that we already have. We need to know who they are and they need to know who we are. And then, um, you know, spring ball will be hitting us in the face before you know it, but we have a few weeks before we get to it, so we're going to have to really go and it's going to, you know, it's going to be a, a good drive on us where we just got to get locked in and, and go with it. Um, March 6th, yes, we're going to go before spring break, then come back, you know, we'll go three days before, then go break, and then we'll come back and finish up. No, you, you know what you can only do there is just have that conversation and, uh, and then you just tell them how you feel and then let them make a decision as a family and they felt as a family that that was the best decision for them is, is to move on. But, um, you know, my take on it, if you're good enough and if you feel like that, that's what you want to do, you know, you, you can't stop them. But I always like for young men to go and get their degree and finish up through college and then go play on that level because that, that's a tough level once you get there and it's a job. And you got to be mature enough to handle it. And some guys are, some aren't. But uh, you have a college, and you know, just enjoy the college life. It's the best four years of your life. And then you have a chance to go move on. You, the money's there. You can make it. It'll be there when you get ready to go. And it's, it's not going anywhere if you work hard enough. Any questions for Coach? All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.